Hello, I'm Tim Sandal and I'm a pharmaceutical microbiologist. And I want to talk about face masks and the issues surrounding them in the context of the coronavirus pandemic. So first off, it's important not to think of face masks as the first line of defence. So ideally, you should avoid working in an area where there may be a risk. Follow advice about staying in and only going out for essential shopping, going to a pharmacist, or if you're a key worker. Then practice social distancing, keeping at least two metres or six feet away from another person. Practice regular hand washing, and here hot water and soap is the best, but if there's no hot water and soap available, then consider um, a hand sanitizer. It's also important if you are at work to regularly disinfect your work areas, focusing on hot touch items like keyboards and uh, a mouse um, or a computer monitor. Um, and where you're trying to pick a disinfectant, then the most effective and things that are not hazardous to human health are alcohol based um, solutions, uh, 61 to 71 percent ethanol or isopropyl alcohol. Now in situations where social distancing cannot be adequately practiced then perhaps there might be a case for wearing face masks but we have to bear in mind that face masks are in short supply for healthcare workers. Now with face masks it's important to understand that surgical face masks are designed to ensure that the person wearing the face mask does not infect another person, such as a surgeon undertaking surgery. It's also um, important to understand that face masks do not fully protect the wearer um, from contracting coronavirus. So although they may in minimise the intake of viruses um, produced by the, the, the wearer, they're also designed to allow easy airflow in the other direction so that the person wearing the mask stays cool and comfortable. Moreover, there are other routes of infection, uh, especially with the eyes. So there may be some circumstances where face masks are needed, where people, key workers can't keep two metres apart from each other outside of the healthcare setting. But here it's important also to note that the face mask must be of the right size for the user. So if you're having to readjust the face mask, then that is poor practice. And it obviously may mean that the face mask hasn't been put on properly or it's the wrong size to start with. Once a face mask has been fitted, then a good test on a face mask is to breathe in and make sure the fabric of the face mask goes inwards. And then also then to breathe out and the face mask should move slightly outward. If it's not doing this, then again, it's not being fitted properly. And there are key risks with handling face masks. So coronavirus RNA has been found to be recoverable from the face mask material several days later. So the face mask must always be regarded as hazardous waste. Putting the face mask on and off carries a risk of viral transmission, especially to the hands, and the way the mask is handled is particularly important, particularly as there could well be contamination inside the mask itself. It's also important to note that face mask efficiency decreases over time. So a typical face mask can only really be worn for about six hours because the act of moisture will minimise the efficacy of the mask. And masks should never be taken off and put back on again. One, it's dangerous and also it minimises the efficacy of the mask. When you're taking face masks off, ideally wear gloves or immediately wash hands with hot water and soap and avoid touching door handles and, and sinks and other things as you go through that process. The face mask should be immediately disposed of in an infectious waste container and as I said before never reuse a face mask. There's also no effective way of adequately disinfecting a face mask without 
harming the integrity of the mask material. So my general advice would be, unless you're a key worker who needs to work in close proximity with somebody else, or of course if you're a healthcare professional uh, who needs to wear a face mask to minimise the potential infection to a patient or for dealing with any splashes of bodily fluids for example, um, then um, if you don't have coronavirus then you really don't need to wear a face mask and you're actually just increasing the risk to others and also it's slightly um, selfish if I can be so bold to wear masks in those circumstances because all you're doing is taking a mask away from a needy healthcare professional masks are in short supply across health services worldwide. So that's it from me. I'm Tim Sandal and uh, I want you all to stay safe and uh, we'll all get through this together. Goodbye.